ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isman man ahsaha wa fi riwayatin man hafidhaha dakhala al-janna the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names whoever memorizes these names and makes dua to Allah by these names and lives his life or her life based on these names he and she they will enter paradise from amongst the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-jabbar al-jabbar and al-jabbar in arabic it has three meanings the first meaning of this name is similar to another name of Allah which is al-qahhar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the compeller that everything that is in the heavens on the in, on the earth all of it obeys the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the meaning of al-jabbar that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was once trying to explain to the companions to the sahaba when he was explaining the words of Allah wa ma qadara Allah haqqa qadrihi wal ardu jami'an qabadatuhu yawm al-qiyamati was samawati matwiyatun bi yamini so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no just estimate have they made of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when on the day of judgment the earth will be in his grasp and he will have the heavens folded up and rolled up like a scroll in his right hand so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying and explaining this verse saying ya khud al jabbar samawatihi wa aradihi yawm al qiyamah that al jabbar will take hold of the, the earth and the heavens on the day of judgment and he was shaking his arms trying to explain to the companions the power of allah on that day and the anger of al jabbar on that day and he was shaking his arms to the point that the minbar was shaking and one of the people in the audience abdullah bin umar he said hatta nadhartu ila al minbari fayat yatahrak min asfal shay'in minhu hatta inni la aqul asaqit huwa bi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam yani the prophet said was shaking so much trying to explain the meaning of this name al jabbar to the point that the minbar was shaking underneath him and Abdullah bin Umar he was looking saying is this minbar going to topple and make the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fall along with it so one of the meanings of al jabbar is that Allah is the compeller but there is another meaning as well the second meaning of al jabbar is that he is the highest and in this way it is similar to another name of Allah al ali that Allah is the highest far above his creation and this is why the arabs they call that tall palm tree that is too hot too tall too high to climb they call it nakhlatun jabbara this tree is a tree that is jabbara it is too high too high to climb but there is a third meaning as well the third meaning of al jabbar is that allah is the mender allah is the one who mends what is broken he is the one who restores what is lost You know when you break a bone, you break your arm. The doctor he will come and set the bone. He will put the bone back to back again in place. And then they take a splint 
In the old days, they would take a piece of wood or something firm and put it against the bone and then tie the splint against the bone. In Arabic, this splint is called Jabira. Jabira. Because it compels the bones to stay in place. And so likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called Al-Jabbar. Because He is the one who restores what is lost. He mends the broken hearts. He is the one that when someone feels sad or depressed, He is the one who consoles and comforts. When one of us gets knocked down on his feet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who lifts him back up. And these three meanings of the name Al-Jabbar were captured by the great scholar Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah in his poem The Nuniyya when he wrote وَكَذَلِكَ الْجَبَّارُ مِنْ أَوْصَافِهِ وَالْجَبْرُ فِي أَوْصَافِهِ قِسْمَانِي جَبْرُ الضَّعِيفِ وَكُلُّ قَلْبٍ قَدْ غَدَى ذَا كَسْرَةٍ فَالْجَبْرُ مِنْ هُدَانِي وَالثَّانِي جَبْرُ الْقَهْرِ بِالْعِزِّ الَّذِي لَا يَنْبَغِي لِي سِوَاهُ مِنْ إِنْسَانِي He said Al-Jabru Likewise, Al-Jabbar is from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Jabr of Allah is of two types. The first type is Jabr al-Da'if. That Allah relieves the one who is weak. The one who is in a weak position, Allah gives him strength. The one who is poor, Allah makes him wealthy. The one who is sick, Allah gives him cure. And every heart that becomes broken. فَالْجَبْرُ مِنْ هُدَانِي Then its mending is close at hand. Because Al-Jabbar subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who mends those broken hearts. وَالثَّانِي And the second type of Jabr is Jabr بِالْقَهْر Is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings justice, his swift justice to those tyrants on the earth. Those tyrants who try to act like Al-Jabbar himself. And this type of uh, behavior, لا ينبغي لي سيواهم الإنساني It's not befitting for a human being to act like this. And this is why, when we call Allah al-Jabbar, this is a form of praise. But if we call a human being Jabbar, then this is a form of blame. Because to call a human being Jabbar means that this person is a tyrant. This person is tyrannical. This person is unjust. Because only Allah is all-powerful. And also all wise. Allah is the one who is mighty and also merciful. So he knows when to inflict, when to bring his power, when to show his power, when to bring justice. But as for human beings, when we get that power, then we become unjust. So someone who has power over others, most of the time, if not all of the time, they become unjust. And this is why we find so many of those who are in positions of, as rulers or of high position, they have power over others, like Fir'aun and like other Fara'ina. They became Jabbar, meaning they were tyrants because they acted in a way that was not appropriate for them to act. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to act like this. And then Ibn Raqim, he said, and then there's a third meaning to the name Al-Jabbar as well, which is that mean, the meaning of being high, so that no human being can reach up to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. مِنْ قَوْلِهِمْ جَبَّارَةٌ لِلنَّخْلَةِ الْعُلْيَ الْيَتِي فَاتَتْ لِكُلِّ بَنَانِي From the way that the Arabs, they call the high tree, Jabbara, نَخْلَةٌ Jabbara, because it is out of reach of the hands. Now the name Al-Jabbar is mentioned only once in the Quran. It is mentioned only once. But the meanings of this name are found throughout the Quran. And all three of these meanings can be found in the story of Musa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story of Musa. And we all know that Fir'aun, he got the news that there would be a male child from Bani Israel who would be born and he would grow up and he would be the source of Fir'aun's destruction. So Fir'aun, he said, Khalas, I have an easy solution for that. Every male child from Bani Israel have it slaughtered. Any male infant that is born, immediately kill it. So the soldiers would go through and they would kill. They would take the male infants and immediately slaughter them. So one woman from Bani Israel, she became pregnant and she gave birth to a young boy. And she named this boy Musa. And now she was so terrified over her baby. What will happen to her son? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed, he instructed her. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ إِرْضِعِي So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the mother Musa, Nurse your child. 
Suckle your child. Give your child the milk. فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فَالْيَمْ وَلَا تَخَافِ وَلَا تَحْزَنِي And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And when you are worried about your child, afraid for your child, then you take him and you put him in the river Nile. And you send him down the river. وَلَا تَخَافِ And don't be afraid. وَلَا تَحْزَنِي And don't be sad. إِنَّا رَادُّوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ We will return him back to you. And we will make him one of the prophets. One of the messengers. So the mother Musa, she did as she was commanded. So she suckled that child. She nursed the child. And then when she became frightened that the soldiers might come at any minute, she put him in the basket. And then she took the basket and she went to the river Nile. And she put the basket on the river and she watched it slowly float away down the river. And then she returned home. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree? Who is the one that finds this basket with this baby in it? فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ The family of Fir'aun are the ones who find him. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the one that Musa's mother is worried about. Is the family of Fir'aun, is, is Fir'aun himself? And who finds this baby? It is the household of Fir'aun. So they find the basket and they find the baby within the basket. So the wife of Fir'aun, she takes this baby and she's so pleased that she now has this beautiful baby boy. But Fir'aun, as soon as he sees the baby, he says, bring me a knife. Somebody bring me a knife. Because خلاص, يعني another infant. So let me do the dhabiha. So she said, لا تقتله. No, don't kill him. عسى أن ينفعنا. Maybe he will benefit us. أو نتخذه ولد. Or maybe we will adopt him as a son. Don't kill this baby. So Fir'aun, يعني خلاص. Like many of us, يعني he doesn't want to have a fight with his wife. Just to keep his wife happy. Fine, you take this one. So he left him. So now, where is Musa growing up? In the palace of Fir'aun himself. Yani Fir'aun is slaughtering the infants by day and by night. And the one that he is seeking, the one that he is afraid of, is the one who is growing up right next to him, next door. This is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the baby is safe. The goal has been achieved. Musa will not be safe. He will not be killed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach us something. About who he is. He wants to teach us the meaning of this name Al-Jabbar. What does it mean to be one, the one who is Al-Jabbar? So he said, وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى فَارِغَ And the heart of the mother of Musa became empty. Empty of what? Empty of every thought except her baby. All she can think about is what happened to my child. Where is my baby? What's happened to my little boy? So then she said to Musa's sister, Qussihi, go see what happened to him. So the sister of Musa, she went and she walked along the river until she saw that the baby was now in the palace of Fir'aun. And the wife of Fir'aun, she's bringing the nursemaids to nurse the child. But the baby, because of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'd already tasted the milk. Whose milk? His mother's milk. So when these other women put him to his breast, put, the, put him to their breast, he said, this is not my mother, this is not the same milk. And the baby knows the milk. This is not my mother's milk. And he kept spitting out the breast. So the sister, she went to the household she, and she said, Shall I not show you a family that maybe they can look after this child for you? They can nurse this child and they will be sincere and look after this child for you. So where did she lead them? Right back to her house. فَرَدَدَنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ So we return the baby back to his mother. The child was safe. As soon as the family of Fir'aun picked up the baby, the child was safe. He would not be killed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us, this is the meaning of being al-jabbar. That Allah is the one who mends the broken hearts. That the mother of Musa, even though her child was safe, her heart was broken. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took one more step and mended her broken heart. فَرَدَدَنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ كَيْ تَقَرَّعَيْنُهَا So we returned him back to his mother so that she would not, so that she would be pleased وَلَا تَحْزَنَ and that she would not be sad. وَلِتَعْلَمَ أَنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍ and that she would know that the promise of Allah is true. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most of the people, they don't know. And then Musa, he grew up. Until he became an adult. 
And then, as we know, he saw a fight between one from Bani Israel and one from the people of Fir'aun. So he intervened in the fight, and he tried to make peace, but he pushed the one who was from the people of Fir'aun, and the man accidentally, he uh, was killed. So Musa fled, because he knew the tyranny of Fir'aun, so he had to flee. So he left, and he walked through the Sinai, and he left and he had nothing, no money, no food, nothing. And he walked through the desert, until finally then he came, now exhausted, with no home, no money, no food, nothing. He finally comes across a well. وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَا أَمَدْيَنَا وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ So he came to a well. And after he had some water to drink, he saw that the people, they were fighting over the bucket. Yani the shepherds, they were fighting to get the bucket to water their flocks. وَوَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمْ وَمْرَأَتَيْنِ تَذُودَانِ And he found that there were two women standing on the side. He said, what's wrong with you two? Why are you standing here on the side like this? They said, They said, we cannot fight with these men over the water. And we also have to water our flock. But we cannot fight with these men and push and shove. So we have to wait until these shepherds are all done. Everyone is finished. Then we go at the end when we take the bucket and we give the water to our flock. Our father is too old for this work. So Musa alayhi salam, he was a man who was full of chivalry. Yani Musa was a man who when he would see something wrong, he cannot bear to uh, accept it. He's not someone who can just turn a blind eye. As soon as he sees something wrong, immediately he must correct it. So he went and he pushed through the crowd and he got the bucket and he took the water and he watered the flock for these two women. And then they left. So Musa, he did this and then he went and he sat under the shade of a tree. And what did he do? He raised his hands and he turned to Al-Jabbar. He turned to the one who lifts us up when life knocks us down. The one who restores to us whatever has been lost. The one who comes and gives relief to the one who is in need. So he said, Rabbi inni liba anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. He said, Oh my Lord, I am in need of any type of good. Musa is homeless now, penniless, friendless. He said, any type of good, anything you can send, oh Allah, I am in need of it. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? The very next verse, فَجَاءَتُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءٍ So one of those two women came to him, walking shyly. What does it mean walking shyly? The scholars of tafsir, they said, she came and she took her sleeve and she was covering her face with it. And she came and she said, Inna abi yad'uka liyajaziyaka ajra ma saqaytalana. She said, our father wants to pay you for the favor you did for us, that you've watered our flock for us. So he went back with her and he told the man the story. So the man, he said, I want to make an agreement with you, a contract with you, that you work for me for a certain number of years. And in exchange, I will marry you one of my daughters. So look at the dua of Musa alayhi salam. He made dua saying, Oh Allah, give me any type of good. And Al-Jabbar gave him every type of good. He gave him a home. He gave him a wife. He gave him a family. He gave him a job. And after that, he would give him something even better. He would give him nubuwa, prophethood. So Musa alayhi salam stayed, he married the daughter and he stayed working for this man. But now it was time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach Musa another of the meetings of this name Al-Jabbar. It was time for Musa to learn <coughs> another meeting in this name Al-Jabbar. So when Musa had finished his term, his contract, فَلَمَّا قَضَى مُوسَى الْأَجَلَ وَسَارَ بِأَهْلِهِ And he was traveling in the desert with his family. He saw a fire on the top of one of the mountains, Mount Tur. So he told his family, stay here. I will go and uh, go to the fire and either I will get some news if there are people there or I will take some uh, a, a branch back with some flames that we will have something to keep us warm in the night. So when Musa came and approached the fire, what happened? He heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling him. And what does Allah say? Inni ana rabbuka fakhla'an alayk. Allah says, I am your Lord. Now take off your shoes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am your Lord. Now take your shoes off. 
Why is Allah talking about his shoes? Allah is saying, I am your Lord. Yani Allah is speaking to you, human being. This is something that never happens. And the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him is, take your shoes off. Why? Because in order to acknowledge that Allah is the highest, we must make ourselves low. To really fully acknowledge that Allah is high, we must make ourselves low. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Musa, take your shoes off and be humble in the presence of your Lord. And this is why some of the righteous before us, when they would make tawaf around the Kaaba, they would take their shoes off and they would make it barefoot. Nowadays, khalas, yani we all make tawaf barefoot because there's marble on the floor. But in the old days, previously, it used to just be sand and stone. But even then, some of the righteous, they would walk, walk around the Kaaba on the hot sand, barefoot, to increase them in humility in the presence of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He orders us in the prayer. When we make sajda, what do we do? You know, the arrogant person we say in English, what? Yani his, this, person, this guy, his nose is in the air. Yani the arrogant one makes his nose the highest point in his body. So Allah, to make us humble, He says, take this nose that is high and put it in the lowest position, in the dirt, on the ground. Make the part that's highest, make it the lowest. And when you make it low, what do we say? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Glory to our Lord. Glory to my Lord, the Most High. So in order to acknowledge that Allah is high, we must make ourselves low. So Allah is telling Musa, I am al-Jabbar. I am your Lord. I am the highest. So now be humble and be low in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even though Allah is high, he's not far. Even though Allah is the highest, it doesn't mean he's far away. But instead, Allah is the closest. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another verse about the same incident, Allah says, وَقَرَّبْنَاهُ najiya," That we brought Musa close for a najiya. Naja in Arabic, it means to have a private conversation. You know, when you were speaking to someone close to you, whispering to that person, this is a najwa in Arabic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we brought Musa close for a private conversation. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, once when he was traveling with the companions, and it was their practice that when they would go any, any high place, when they would go up a mountain or a hill, they would say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And they were shouting it with such enthusiasm, such spirit, shouting it, Allahu Akbar. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Irba'u ala anfusikum. Take it easy on yourselves. Take it easy on yourselves. Be gentle with your souls. فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَدْعُونَ أَصَمْ وَلَا غَائِبًا Because you're not calling on one who's deaf. Allah is not deaf or absent. وَلَكِنْ تَدْعُونَ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا قَرِيبًا But you are calling on one who is all hearing, all seeing, close. So you don't need to shout. And so it was time now for Musa to learn yet another of the, of the meanings of this name, Al-Jabbar. But this would be learned very soon. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه جمعين أما بعد so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa his, his mission to call Fir'aun and his people to Islam. So Musa went with his brother Harun and they called Fir'aun to Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa so many miracles. And we know these miracles. They're mentioned in the Quran. That he's, he would throw his staff and it would become a serpent. And he would take out his hand and it would shine bright. And so many miracles he showed the people. And yet Fir'aun and his people, they refused. Out of their arrogance, they refused to believe except for just a handful, just a few. So finally, when Musa realized that Fir'aun was not going to embrace Islam. And Fir'aun, he, he knew the truth, but he would never obey it. He would never submit to it. Then Musa, alayhi salam, he raised his hands yet again. Making dua to Al-Jabbar yet again. But this time invoking him for the, a different meaning. Not for the one that would mend the broken hearts. But instead the one who would bring justice. That would bring justice to those who are mazloom, who, are, who have been oppressed. So Musa raised his hands and he said, Rabbana, 
أطمس على أموالهم واشدد على قلوبهم فلا يؤمنوا حتى يروا العذاب الأليم He said, O oh, our Lord, destroy the wealth of Fir'aun and his people and make their hearts hard so that they don't believe until it's too late and until they see the painful punishment. And Harun was saying, Ameen, Ameen to Musa's dua. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا Your dua, the dua of you too, has been accepted. فَاسْتَقِيمَا So walk straight on the straight path. وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِ سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And don't follow the path of those who don't know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa, فَأَسْرِ بِعِبَادِي لَيْلًا إِنَّكُمْ مُتَّبَعُونَ He told Musa, take Bani Israel and you escape at night because you will be followed by Fir'aun. So Musa and Bani Israel, they escaped during the night. And they headed towards the Holy Land, towards Asham. But in the morning, Fir'aun, he realized that he had been deceived. He gathered his army, they went in pursuit. So finally, when Musa and his people, they reached the sea. And now there is no road ahead of them. There is no way. There is only the ocean in front of them. And they look behind. And what do they see? Fir'aun and his army on their horses, galloping, riding as fast as they, as they can behind them. فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ So when the two sides could see each other, the companions of Musa, they said, إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ And you could see from the way Allah describes their words, they didn't have any doubt. They said, we are caught. إِنَّا حَرْفَ التَّوْكِيدِ لَا مُدْرَكُونَ لَا مَتَّوْكِيدِ Yeah, there's, they have no doubt. We are caught. We are finished. But with the same certainty that they had in defeat, Musa had the same certainty in victory. قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعْيَ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ Musa said, no, my Lord is with me. He will guide me. فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى أَنِدْرِ بِعَصَاكِ الْبَحَرِ So Allah revealed to Musa, take your staff and strike the sea with it. So Musa did as he was commanded. And what happened? فَانْفَلَقَا فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كِالطَّوْدِ الْعَظِيمِ So the sea split. And now the water were like two mountains of water reaching up to the sky. And now the road is clear in front of them. So Musa and Ben Israel, quickly they went across until they went and they reached the other side. And when the last of Ben Israel had gotten across, Musa went back to the water with his staff to strike the sea again so that the sea would be a barrier between him and Fir'aun. But Allah gave another command. Allah told Musa, وَتْرُكِ الْبَحْرَ رَحْوًا He said, leave the sea as it is. Leave the ocean as it is. إِنَّهُمْ جُنْدٌ مُغْرَقُونَ They are an, they're an army that will be drowned. So Musa stood by the sea with his staff waiting for the command of Allah. And when Fir'aun and his army reached the coast and they saw now the miracle again, another miracle, the water standing straight and the road is clear in front of them. Even then they did not believe. So in their arrogance and in their pride they went across to pursue Bani Israel. And so they went one after the other into the, onto the road. And as they went and they were approaching the other side, then Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the command, now strike the sea. So, so Musa struck the sea with his staff and they were drowned. وَأَنْجَيْنَا Musa وَمَنْ مَعَهُ أَجْمَعِينَ ثُمَّ أَغْرَقَنَا الْآخَرِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and those with him and he destroyed Fir'aun and his army. When the Prophet ﷺ made hijrah to Al-Madinah, he found the Jews in Al-Madinah, they were fasting the 10th of Muharram. So he said, what is this day that you fast? They said, this is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Bani Israel from Fir'aun. And so Musa fasted this day out of thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also fast this day to commemorate this day that Allah saved Musa and Bani Israel. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ وَأَوْلَى مِنْ مُوسَىٰ بَيْ مُوسَىٰ مِنْكُمْ He said, we are closer and more worthy of Musa than you. So he ordered the Muslims to also fast the 10th of Muharram and to, uh, to commemorate this day. And then afterwards, he ordered the Muslims to fast not only the 10th, but also the 9th so that we be different from the Jews. The 10th of Muharram is Monday next week. Monday next week is the 10th. So we should in 
following with the sunnah of our Prophet وسلم, fast both the 9th, which is Sunday, and also the 10th, which is Yawm al-Ashura. This day on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us the meanings of his name al-Jabbar, that he is the highest, that he is the one who mends the broken hearts, and he is the one who brings swift justice to those who disobey him. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our good deeds. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to fast on the day of Ashura and every other day. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah wa salli wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een. Allah ma'iz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allah ma'iz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allah ma'iz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Wa dammir a'da al-Din wa ansur ibadak wa muwahidin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina a'adha بالنار آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين قيم الصلاة